I'd rather you not even mention it or let alone allow us to download it if we're not going to be able to get all of the cool new features that's supposed to come with this update. That's like buying me tickets to go see Jordan play, but I can't go inside and watch. It's like, bruh, why did you buy the tickets in the first place? Uh... Okay, so I thought the new PS5 updated features was gonna be available to everyone here in the US or North America. Well, I guess I was wrong about that because I did the update, but I still don't have it. And I saw a lot of you guys out there don't have it as well, and that's the brand new welcome page. So let's talk about it. All right, y'all, so finally we getting it or we got it, y'all. Well. Kind of. <laughs> and it took a long time for us to be able to get it because I showed you all these features here back in March of this year. But I guess late, y'all, is uh, better than never, right? So let me go ahead and break down all of the new features that PlayStation just gave us or they're giving us because, like I told you in the beginning of this video, I did the update and so did you guys, but you don't have it. But look, we're we going to talk about all of that and a couple more hidden features that nobody's talking about. So let's go ahead and break it all the way down. First thing I want to walk you guys through here is just the process of how to actually update your OG PS5 as well as your PS5 Slim, as well as the PS5 Pro. Once you guys get it and once we get it here in the house, hopefully, man, your boy going to be able to get my hands on one of these joints. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. So to update you guys, man, you want to go ahead and go to settings. You want to go to system. You want to go to system software, system software, update and settings then update system software, then update using internet, and then update. Update, 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 man. Listen, y'all, I don't know why we gotta go through seven freaking different menus just to get to an update here on the PS5, but hey, we here now. <laughs> now it's gonna go ahead and install, and then it's gonna restart your PS5, and just like that, you in there. Well, kinda, because if you if you like me, and you did the update and stuff that I just mentioned, but you still don't see the new welcome page, then apparently uh, <laughs> that's on purpose and I'm gonna talk about that. So my original plan for this video here was to walk through here on the screen here behind me here uh, with the PS5 and showcasing all of the new welcome home pages. But it seems that even if you've done the update that only a select few users got the opportunity to experience it early. And I guess your boy here wasn't on that list of users. Now, I know you're probably like, well, see kid, aren't you in the US? Yes, aren't you in North America? Yes, but didn't you guys get it first? Yes and no. So if you guys look closely in the release notes of the update here, it says that the Welcome Hub is now available in the home screen. For users in North America, this enhancement replaces the Explore Hub. So I'm sitting here, right? And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, yo, I live in the US, right? So let me go ahead and download this to my PS5 so that way I can show it to you guys, right? Well. I downloaded it, man, and as you guys can see here, nope, I still got the Explore tab up here, which should not be here and should be replaced with the new Welcome page. But then if you keep reading, right, it says a limited number of users will receive the Welcome Hub in this update. All users worldwide will receive this enhancement within one to two months. I'm assuming if you guys don't have it as well, that we're going to be getting another update within the next month or so to be able to get access to this freaking new homepage. I guess I couldn't sit at the cool kids table this time around with this update, but again, it's all good. I'm going to be real with y'all, man. I kind of got to be honest with you guys is I don't like that one bit, right? Like, why would you allow us to literally see what we're getting, download the latest update, and then don't give us all of the features that's supposed to be within the update like i'd rather you not even mention it or let alone allow us to download it if we're not going to be able to get all of the cool new features that's supposed to come with this update that's like buying me tickets to go see jordan play but i can't go inside and watch it's like bro why did you buy the tickets in the first place <laughs> but anyway now that that's all out of the way before the explore tab if you guys know that was only available here to us users but with this brand new update this new welcome page here will be for everybody across the globe Everybody across the world is going to have this homepage, which I think personally, man, is much better than limiting certain features based on geographic locations. Never really made a whole lot of sense to me why they did that to begin with, since the love for gaming is honestly is a worldwide thing. Speaking of which, right, the first major change, which I personally think is probably going to be like the most noticeable thing that you're going to see within this entire update, and that is the Explore page has now been replaced with this brand new welcome page that we still don't have <laughs> which honestly man I'm gonna be real with y'all man I know all jokes aside 
I think this welcome home page looks really dope, man, and it's got some cool features that go with it. Now think of this as like your new personalized space on your PS5 home screen that you guys can dial in as well as customize it how you guys want with widgets where uh, you can see controller battery percentages, you can see your Pulse uh, Explore Buzz here, you can see your Pulse Explore headphones, uh, the Elites, the battery percentage with that, as well as other accessory battery percentages that you have up here. I love having that now on my home screen because now, even if I'm in game, right, I can easily press on the PlayStation button here and be able to get back to the home page and see my battery percentage at a quick glance just by pressing this button right here, which to me is dope. So some of the things that you can add to this new welcome screen is trophies from a widget's perspective. You can do battery percentage, storage space, which is a big one for me, and we're going to talk about that here in a second. Accessibility, game captures, uh, PlayStation news, your wish list, uh, discovery tips, uh, PlayStation Plus, friends online, friends activity, as well as your PlayStation Store. So believe it or not, man, you can actually add a lot of stuff to this new welcome screen. Now for me, if I'm being real with y'all, I'm not adding all of that on to my screen. I recommend keeping it somewhat clean unless you guys just want to be that guy or girl out there and you just want to turn on every freaking thing. You know, if that's you, then hey, by all means, go off. <laughs> now once you guys have added this to the screen, you can also move them around where you want them. Now to me, I actually like the option that we now have the ability to be able to move these around as well as adjust the size based on three preset sizes that they have, with the largest one being able to obviously display more information. Now, another cool thing that you guys can do is use an L1 and R1 on your controller here. So let's say you guys have uh, the store widget up, right? You can actually toggle inside of that particular widget and see the different drives that you guys have. So if you have the internal drive, obviously, which is the one come with the system, and then let's say you put an M.2 in there, or you have another external drive, you can see all of those just toggling through using L1 and R1. You also have some preset widget displays. If you guys don't want to go through the whole setup process and selecting one and not selecting one, PlayStation will choose it for you based on the presets that you guys choose. And your choices are highlights, uh, social, solo gamer, and then obviously your own personal customized preset. Now, another thing that you guys can do on this welcome screen here is the ability to be able to change the background as well as some moving backgrounds. Now, I'm actually hyped for this one here because I feel like, and I know we're not there yet, but I do feel like this is one step closer to getting themes back on PS5 like we had on the PS4. So shout out to all of my PS4 peeps out there that's still rocking your themes. I know it ain't themes, but hey, you know, we will accept it. I'll take this over nothing. <laughs> Although, man, we can't change this background here on the PS5, just keep in mind it only changes for the welcome screen and not when you guys navigate to other gaming areas on your PS5. Those will still be themed out per the game that you guys are using or you guys are highlighting. And last, you can also set your background to be screen captures from your own media gallery as well. Now, another dope thing about the welcome screen is, let's say you guys are downloading a new game, right? And you're updating the game. Instead of having to go to the downloads area, when you press this PlayStation button here, you can now see on the welcome screen a temporary widget that's gonna display at the top of the widgets here, and it's gonna show you the progress of the data transfer, which to me, it's dope. And once it's done, man, it's gonna go ahead and go away because again, it's temporary. And if you wanna go ahead and move that temporary widget, you can also change that in the settings area to either be above or you can have it display below all of your current widgets, which to me, I personally like mine to be above just because the whole object of that feature is for you guys to easily be able to see it. And I feel like if you got too many widgets on there, it just, might just fade in the background at the bottom, if that makes sense. Now that you guys know what to expect with this new welcome screen, another feature here that we got coming and confirmed is a new way to share a party link with friends for them to be able to join your voice chat. Now, I can't tell you, man, how dope this is because now I can actually text a friend, I can blah, 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 send a text to them, and then just like that, man, they can be able to chat with me here online without me having to add them as a friend on PlayStation. So to do this, all you guys have to do is go to Control Center, click on Invite Player, and then click on Share Party Link. And PlayStation is gonna generate a scannable QR code, which is similar to what they did with the PlayStation Portal when you get that whole authentication to be able to join a public network. Then on the other end, the recipient of that will go ahead and open the link, and then on their mobile device, they're gonna join the party on their PS5 from the PlayStation app. And just so you guys know, the PlayStation app, yes, is also getting this update as well, if that's not already noted. Now this next one here, right, is probably Probably gonna be one of my favorite features that they've added, which is similar to what Sony did with the Sony Endzone products and their other headphones and earbuds, which is allowing for users to now be able to get a personalized 
3D audio experience. Now, if you haven't ever experienced 3D audio on the PlayStation, it is so freaking good. Now, I know you guys are probably like, well, CK, what the hell does this mean? Well, this now means by going to your settings, sound, and 3D audio headphones on your PS5 and just following through the steps, it's gonna run through a series of audio sounds that are all around you. Better yet, let me just go ahead and just show you exactly what that experience is like so that way you can see it for yourself. <laughs> Now, once this is done, you can now save that 3D audio profile to a specific user account. Each user on your PS5 can now have their own personal 3D audio experience that is tailored to their account and their profile, which is dope. I'm so glad they didn't allow you only to have one profile per console because to me, that would have just been whack. So, hey, shout out to PlayStation, man. I give flowers when they do. Now, the next one is cool because PlayStation now allows users to enable remote play for certain users on your PS5. So, by going to your settings, go to systems, go to remote play, and enable remote play, and determine who should get access to remote play features. Now, this is a feature that must be turned on if you also have a PlayStation portal or gaming on mobile handheld devices. So, if there's some people out there that's on your PS5 console as an account, and you don't want them to have access to remote play, then psh, turn that bad boy off. <laughs> now this next one here is only for PS5 Slim and PS5 Pro users that I talked about earlier, and unfortunately, OG PS5 users didn't get this feature, and that is adaptive charging for the DualSense controller, DualSense Edge, as well as the PSVR 2 and the latest access controller. So what this is gonna allow you guys to be able to do with your PS5 Slim or your PS5 Pro is in rest mode, adaptive charging will take over and help save power by adjusting the length of time that your power is supplied to your controller here based on its battery level. Now to me, this is dope because if we can use less energy, I'm all for it, man, because listen, my energy company been getting all the ducats this year. <laughs> so to set this up, man, all you guys got to do is just go to your settings, go to system, go to power saving, go to features available in rest mode and select power supply to USB ports and then select adaptive. So now whenever your PS5 Slim and your Pro is in rest mode, it will determine how much battery life is on your controller that it needs to recharge it. And then from there, it's gonna charge it up using only the power necessary as well as the energy that it needs to charge the controller. Now this next one here is an interesting one because I've actually never had to even use this or have an issue with it, but it is called restore licenses. Now you guys have the option to be able to restore one license at a time on your console. This is mainly if you guys are having trouble with the game on a system that won't play for some odd reason, you can actually go into your settings, go to users and accounts, go to other, then go to restore licenses. And in here, you're gonna be able to see all of the games that you guys can restore a license to. So you just select the one that you guys want or the one that you're having issues with and just restore the license for that game and then you should be good to go. Or if you want, you can actually go to the specific game in your main menu or you can also go to your gaming library and just click on the menu button on your controller here and then from there, you're going to be able to select restore license here as well. Again, not a major feature or issue that I've had with the console, but if you do, now you know how to fix it. <laughs> now this next one here is about storage, y'all, and this is a big one because one of the major problems or dilemmas that us gamers, and we all face it, and that's just in consoles in general, not even just PS5, and that is storage space, y'all. So PlayStation has given us a friendly reminder that will show up within our settings, storage at the top here, and it's gonna let you guys know some of the things that you guys can do to be able to free up some of the space, because as you guys can see, I'm almost full here, but you know, man, your boy got that M.2 expanded storage on deck. <laughs> and the last one is now the invite to new game option, which you could get to from multiple places on the PS5 has now been removed. Instead, you have to do it from when you guys first start the game. Then it's gonna allow you guys to be able to send an invitation to the gaming session that you guys have going, making it a whole lot simpler. Oh, I forgot one more thing. I know I said the last thing was the last thing, but real quick, y'all. So you will have to make an update to your DualSense controllers, as well as other accessories uh, that goes along with the PS5 because they've also received an update as well. Most likely it's to work with that new adaptive charging feature if you guys have a PS5 Slim as well as the PS5 Pro that I spoke about earlier. But either way, man, let me know if you guys already have the welcome screen, how you guys are liking it because, you know, I haven't been able to fully experience it just yet. But like I said, man, I'm still waiting for them to be able to give me the welcome screen. But once I get it, 
I'm going to pull back up here, man. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on it and, you know, kind of walk around it and all of that. Now, if you guys like this video, then go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like button down below. And if you guys are new here, then you already know what to do, man. Click on that subscribe button, man, and join the family, y'all. And also, man, if you guys want to support the channel, you can click on that join C-Squad button at the bottom, man. And then just from there, uh, you guys will become a part of the C-Squad, man, and support the channel in a major way. And also, I go live every single day, Monday through Friday, starting around 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you guys want to pull up for that and join your boy, come hang out with me, man. It's a dope time, man. So uh, hopefully I'll see y'all there. If you do, then just let me know, man. You came from this video. But other than that, man, happy gaming. See y'all in the next one, squad. We out. <laughs>